it going tonight? Oh, it's going good, man. It's going really good. I'm excited to get this part two out there, man. There's a lot of good games in this part. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm super excited about this because uh, we're going to jump right in here, here in just a quick second. But uh, part one, I mean, you see in the big board for my team uh, right there in front of you, it was uh, we did a lot of games. 42 or 22 games to be exact. We got 22 more to put on the board here tonight. So it's going to be a lot of games, a lot of craziness. I think the best way to start this thing off is right where we ended the last uh, episode at, which was we add in a little bonus game, which was Army versus Navy, which now has been played. And the Navy ended up winning. We both called it as Army based off of record. Um, But uh, we were wrong. And uh, I feel very uh, disappointed in myself now because I am a uh, (laughs) – I go Navy a believer and I still pick the army and Navy won, but uh, congratulations to the Naval Academy. Uh, love our Naval Navy brethren. And uh, I think that's a great way to get us started tonight, which is let's talk about the other Academy games as we go into the bowl season. First one is going to be the first responder universe uh, bowl. Um, and that is the first responders bowl which is the Air Force Academy versus the University of Louisville. Uh, There's no Lamar Jackson on this Louisville team, so I don't see them uh, (laughs) making a big push. And as such, uh, I'm going to be putting up the Air Force Academy as the winner of this game. Um, I think they'll actually win it pretty handily. And um, that's why I'm putting them all the way up at number 21 on my board. Um, I think they're going to pull this one off and they're going to make, a, uh, make some make some noise in the process. We'll follow that one up with the Armed Forces Bowl, which is the Army again. And this time they're going to be playing against the University of Missouri. Uh, SEC versus the Army. Army has one of the weakest strengths of schedule in the entire country this year. So their eight and three is kind of a bloated eight and three. Right. Um, they have won the Armed Forces Bowl three times in their history. And uh, it's an interesting uh, little tidbit here is Missouri's coach, uh, Eli Drew- Drewitz, is 8 0 in his career as an assistant and a head coach in bowl games. So he has never lost a bowl game. Um, I do not see this being the first time. So I'm going to take Missouri. I didn't put much confidence in this one here because. By record, you would think that Army has an advantage, but just like we saw uh, earlier this week against the Naval Academy, I don't think it's going to come pay off for them. And I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with the Army or the Missouri. Sorry. Yeah, on on the Louisville Air Force game, um, I know you said that Louisville doesn't have a Lamar Jackson this year, but they do have a kid named Malik Cunningham, and he's a pretty good player. Um, he passed for over 2,700 yards this season, 18 touchdowns. But he also ran for 968 yards. It's almost 1,000 yards on the ground and scored another 19 touchdowns. He scored more rushing touchdowns than throwing touchdowns. That's pretty crazy. That is that is pretty crazy. Now, he's not Lamar Jackson. But that's that's a pretty, you know, pretty nice comparison there to a Lamar Jackson. So I, I, I think he's he's going to play pretty good. But I'm going with Air Force on this one. Um, I'm not very confident in it, though. I'm going with the 33rd in confidence, but I am going to go with with Air Force on this one. Um, They have a junior running back, Brad Roberts, 279 carries, 1,279 yards and 13 touchdowns. So I think I'm going to roll with Air Force on that one. Uh, The Army-Missouri game, I know that the – the record is inflated, but I'm going to go with Army in this one, and I'm actually going to go with number seven in confidence. I'm going really high on this one. I'm taking a chance here. Um, Jacoby Buchanan, the running back, he had 11, 100, ah, 111 carries for 412 yards and 11 touchdowns. But as a team, they had five players go over 300 rushing yards. And I think, I think they're just they're going to run the ball and they're going to use that triple option. If they use it, if they use it, they're going to use that triple option to kind of throw that Missouri team off. So I'm going with Army. I don't know if it's a good pick, but I'm doing it. And I'm going high confidence. I'm going to try to get some points out of that. <laughs> well, I respect that you have so much respect for the military academies, <laughs> uh, as all should. Um, although I will say I'm a little disappointed that you put Army over top of Air Force, but that's just a personal uh, uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> thing there. But, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, with that said, um, 
you know, in the next the next set of games, uh, this one here is an interesting uh, interesting set. So these are actual like I mean, kind of kind of rivalry games, although yeah. they're not rivalries in the sense that they get played every year. But uh, we're going to be looking at some state some state kind of games going on here, and that is Florida versus the University of Central Florida in the Gasparilla Bowl. Um, I am definitely going to be taking. Florida in this game with I could have seen really, that coming. <laughs> <laughs> I am a, I am a Gator fan. I am a Gator fan, so I'll, I'll admit that one there. But um, Florida has won the only two previous meetings they've ever had with UCF. Interesting note is that they're about to actually start in a um, a series of games against each other, starting up here in about two more years, where they're actually going to be playing quite frequently against each other. Um, so that uh, this could wind up being kind of a, a lead to what's to come kind of thing between these two schools. And on top of that, Florida is waiting their new coach, uh, Bill Nap- uh, Napier. They just signed him on coming from yeah. Louisiana. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. Louisiana that uh, we actually talked about last time. So uh, that could be an interesting game. We'll see how that one uh, turns out, but I definitely think that Florida is going to win that game. And then the next one uh, we're going to go against, we're going to go state on state, the North versus the South, Carolina Bowl, which is called the Duke's Mayo Bowl, but you might as well call it the Carolina Bowl because it is North Carolina, but <laughs> South Carolina. Um, these two teams have played a lot in history. It is an ACC yeah. SEC matchup, but North Carolina has beaten South Carolina 33 to 19 with four ties all time. Um, my biggest thing on this one here is South Carolina has a lot of really good talent, but they have a lot of good yeah. talent that's expected to go in the NFL next year. And that means that they very likely could have a lot of opt outs. And that is something you have to take into account whenever you're dealing with an SEC school, especially. And uh, because of that, I am going to give my money to North Carolina. And I'm going to do a 12 confidence. I'm pretty confident that North Carolina is actually going to wind up pulling this one out. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to agree with you with the Florida UCF game. I'm going Florida in that one. Um, Florida. Florida historically is a, is a good college football team. UCF is kind of an up and coming team. Um, UCF does have a really good uh, senior defensive tackle though. And, and his name really stuck out to me. Big cat, Brian, 27 solo tackles, 21 assists, 48 total tackles, six sacks and three passes defended. I'm, I'm going with the, I'm, I'm, I'm going with Florida, but I'm, I'm rooting for that guy. Look at that name. Big Cat Brian. Good name and quite the stat line. Right, right. Um, UCF also had a, a pretty good uh, freshman quarterback, uh, Mikey Keene, 63.6% passing or uh, completion percentage, over 1,500 yards, 16 touchdowns. So pretty pretty decent season for a freshman, I would say. Um, but Florida just kind of – historically, they're, they're a better team. They're a bigger program coming from the SEC. And I just – I'm, I'm going to go with, with Florida in that one. Um, I'm also going to agree with you in the North Carolina, South Carolina game, the Carolina Bowl. I'm going to agree with you on that one. I think North Carolina is going to pull that out. Um, Sam Howell is a pretty decent quarterback. He's a junior, passed for over 2,800 yards and 23 touchdowns this year. Um, they're running back Ty Chandler, went over 1,000 yards on the season. And they also had a, a sophomore receiver, Josh Downs, who had 98 catches, 1,273 yards. That's a lot of yards. Um, I'm going to put that one at my 25th confidence because I think it is going to be a good game. And I'm not overly confident in North Carolina. But with the opt-outs and things like that, I, I think they're going to pull it out. Now, the Florida game, I'm pretty confident in that one. I'm putting that one at 10. I, I'm pretty sure Florida is going to win that one, but this is football. You never know. 100%. Um, moving on to the next game, we got Kent State versus Wyoming. Um, Wyoming, I'm going with Wyoming in this one. I'm going to put it at 21st confidence. Um, junior linebacker Chad Muma, 80 solo tackles, 49 assisted tackles. That's 129 total tackles on the season. The guy was all over the field, just, you know, putting up stats everywhere. He had, he had one sack, one pass defended, three interceptions, and he scored two touchdowns. Also had a fumble recovery. So he just, you know, not a, a huge amount of stats other than the tackles, 
but just stats all over the all over the board. You know, he just he he was he did a little bit of everything. It seemed like, and he had a good season. So I think their defense is going to step up in that game and take that one. Um, the next game. Oh, well, I should probably mention my confidence in that one. I'm putting that one 21st because I, again, think that's going to be a pretty decent game. But uh, I think Wyoming will pull it out. Now, the Northern Illinois-Coastal Carolina game, uh, this one, I didn't really know where to go here. I'm, I put this one at 28th confidence. I'm going with Coastal Carolina. I think they had a they had a really good season, but Northern Illinois had a pretty solid season as well. I mean, this is a 10 and two record versus a nine and four record. Um, both kind of smaller schools. Um, I think this will be a really interesting game to watch. To be honest, um, Coastal Carolina finished second in the Sun Belt East. Um, they had a receiver go over a thousand yards, Javon Hilly. Um, he averaged 17.5 per catch, which is pretty good. And then um, Northern Illinois had a freshman running back, Jay Ducker. He had over 1,000 yards on the ground, only scored three touchdowns, though. So I don't know. I think this game is going to be a pretty close game, but I'm going to take Coastal Carolina in that one. And then moving on to Georgia State and Ball State, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't really know a lot about these teams. Um I'm, I'm going to go with Ball State, and I'm going to put it at 15th because I'm hoping to get some points out of this one. I really don't know much about either of these teams, so I, I don't have much to say on that. But now moving on to Wisconsin versus Arizona State. This one, I think, is a game of running backs. I think that – I think Wisconsin's going to win it. I think they have the advantage at running back, and I definitely think this game is going to be about the running backs. But I'm going to put it at 36 confidence because I don't know. I think both of these schools are pretty – they're pretty good. They're not great, but they're not bad. Um, Wisconsin had two running backs. They have a freshman running back, Braylon Allen, who had 157 carries, 1,109 yards and 12 touchdowns. He averaged 7.1 yards per carry as a freshman. That's pretty solid. Um, their other running back is a junior, Ches Mal uh, Maluzzi. He had 173 carries for 815 more yards and five touchdowns. So he averaged 4.7. The freshman averaged 7.1. And, and together, they, they almost had 2,000 rushing yards. So that's a pretty run-heavy offense, you know. Um, Arizona State, though, they have a senior running back, Rashad White, and he had 182 carries for 1,006 yards and 15 touchdowns, 5.5 average per carry. So I definitely think this game is going to be decided on the ground. It's going to be played in the trenches. It's going to be a rough and tough game. Um, I'm going 36 confidence, and I'm taking Wisconsin. All right. So uh, that's a I, – I, I like that. I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that last pick. Uh, we'll see here in a second that uh, – this is not going to be uh, a straight up agreement with you on any of these here, but uh, there's a couple of them that are okay. Um, in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm taking Kent State. I think they'll beat Wyoming. In the in the Cure Bowl, I'm going with Northern Illinois over Coastal Carolina, and then in the Camellia Bowl, I'm taking Ball State over Georgia State. Only thing to really note there is uh, the Coastal Carolina one, um, and that would be Coastal Carolina has a great record, but they only had the second easy well they had the set the worst strength of schedule in the entire country uh okay. is a reason why they wound up winning so many games this year and i think that had a lot to do with it um and this will only be their second ever bowl game the only other one was last year they also played in the cure bowl and they lost so we'll see okay. uh, up and coming team but i just don't see it happening quite yet this year now we get into two of my favorite games i am homering these two games because uh well i'm a I'm an alumni of both the schools, and I'm going with my alumni uh, part here. Arizona State versus Wisconsin State in the Las Vegas Bowl. I'm taking Arizona State, uh, and I'm taking them with a 38 confidence. I'm not overly confident in this game. However, like I said, uh, it's my school. Forks up. We are going to win because that's what we do. We are Sun Devils. <laughs> and uh, uh, so uh, I think it's going to be a good game. 
Um, either way, I think it's actually going to be a really strong game. Wisconsin's a very yeah. tough team. Arizona State's kind of the, the high, uh, high-flying high type team, so it'll be interesting to see that matchup. Uh, Pac-12, Big Ten, never really – they just don't align very well in, like, stylistically. Right. But um, they, at the same point in time – um, there's a reason why they put them in the Rose Bowl every year together is that's like the two best teams from each of those conferences because of this exact reason. And uh, historically, ASU is 3-1 and one against Wisconsin, so I think uh, it's going to go on to 4-1, and one, and it is going to be Arizona State again. Like I said, forks up, let's go, Sun Devils. And then uh, next game, we have the Lending Tree Bowl. It is going to be Eastern Michigan versus Liberty University. Um Eastern Michigan has not won a bowl game since 1987. They've only played in two since then. They lost them both. <laughs> and uh, the exact opposite can be said about Liberty. Liberty's only played in two bowl games in their history. They've won them both, 2-0. and oh. And once again, that's my college because, well, that's where I got my master's degree from. So uh, we're going to go with Liberty University. We're going to say they <laughs> knock off Eastern Michigan. Mediocre uh, confidence level now in the number 31 because uh, – I'm being, uh, I'm trying to downplay a little bit of my homism, homism on those ones there by being like, all right, in case I'm overestimating what my, uh, my home schools can do, we'll drop down the confidence a little bit on them, but uh, <laughs> right. we'll win that one. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you. I, I think Eastern Michigan's going to pull that out. I think they're going to get their first bowl win. Um, Hassan Beydoun He's a junior running or receiver. I think he's going to have a big game. He had 86 catches this year, 932 yards. Um, I, I think I think Eastern Michigan pulls this one out, but I'm going to go 27 confidence. I'm not overly confident in it, but I, I, I feel they're going to pull that one out. Um, the next game we're talking about is UTEP versus Fresno State. <laughs> I'm going 11th confidence, and I'm going Fresno State in this one. I think Fresno State is going to pull this game out mostly because their quarterback is a pretty good quarterback. I don't think he'll make it. I I don't know. I don't want to say that. I think he's got a chance at the NFL. I don't think he'll be a starter, but I I think he could be a a decent backup. Um, He's a senior this year. It's Jake Hayner, uh, 67.5% completion rate or passer ah, passing completion rating 3,810 yards that's ninth in the nation and 32 touchdowns is 11th in the nation um I I think he's going to lead them to a bowl game win here I I think they're going to take this one over UTEP and I'm going 11th confidence the next one Central Michigan versus Boise State kind of going to be a homer on this one I'm from the area Um, I'm going Boise State Boise State I've always liked Boise State. I've always liked how tough they were. Um, they've always had a really good team. Even in their down years, they've had really good teams. Um, some of these players, though, I feel like have been there for, for 15 years, man. It's crazy. Uh, Hank Bachmeyer, how long has that guy played? He's only a junior. <laughs> like, <laughs> it feels like he's been around for 10 years. It's crazy. Um, went over 3,000 yards this year, 20 touchdowns. Um, senior receiver Khalil Shakir over 1100 yards, seven touchdowns, 14 and a half yards per catch. Um, I'm going Boise state. I'm going with the 18th confidence on that one. All right. All right. Well, we're, once again, we're going to be seeing the world in a little bit different lights here, but, uh, funny enough. So I do agree with you on Fresno state beating UTEP in the New Mexico bowl. I'm putting way low confidence. The reason why I'm putting way low confidence on that is because, their head coach has already uh, signed a deal with University of Washington, so he's gone. Yep. And uh, the quarterback that you're so interested in, Jake Kaner, has actually already declared that he will not be playing in this game because oh. he's in the transfer portal. So, But with that said, UTEP has lost four of their last five games. They're not looking very strong. I do think Fresno State has a pretty strong or well, solid backup um, quarterback. So I think Fresno State still does pull it off, but I'm dropping that confidence level. I would have had that confidence probably up in that like four to five range had it been for the head coach and quarterback being there. But with them not there, I'm dropping it down. I just don't have any trust in UTEP. So that's why right. I'm not going with them. Then I disagree with you on Boise State winning this game, and that's because I'm taking Central Michigan putting at 33 overall confidence. And really, it comes down to one reason. That is the name 
Lou Nichols the third, the number one running back in the country this year in yards rushing, 1,700 yards. That guy has been running rough shot over the entire league. Um, and Boise State's just not as strong as they've been in the last couple of years. They've definitely kind of taken a step back. They also changed conferences and made a little bit tougher schedule for themselves. Yep. But um, I think Central Michigan uh, is a pretty strong team this year, and I think they will actually pull this one out. Next up, we have the Outback Bowl. So we're getting on to a New Year's Day game here. It's going to be Penn State versus Arkansas. So we got a Big Ten SEC matchup. Arkansas is ranked number 22 this year. And it's the first time they've actually played a Big Ten school since 2010. So a long time since the last time they've done one. Uh, Penn State, though, lost five of the last seven games. Um, They're not looking too bright right now. They are three and one in history in Outback Bowls, but with the they're just not they haven't been looking good at the end of the season they've been getting beat right. up pretty badly in a lot of their games and for that reason i'm going to go with arkansas and i'm going big i am putting this my number three game on the board mm-hmm. i'm putting confidence in it uh i have a lot of sec schools winning in this tournament uh in the bowl games this year so <laughs> i'm uh, i'm definitely gonna be banking on them having a good showing throughout the the bowl season we'll see if that pays off for me finally Let's do the cheese it Bowl, because who doesn't love some Cheez-Its, right? <laughs> and, uh, right, right. <laughs> we, got, uh, we got Clemson versus Iowa State. It's an interesting matchup because these are two teams that came into the year, both ranked in the top 10. Both have fallen pretty drastically. Clemson's right now ranked number 19. Um, they're coming in at 9-3. and three. They did kind of right the ship halfway through the season, but I think they at one point like 3-3 and three or 4-3. and three. Yeah. They looked really bad at one point in time before they started writing it. So, yeah. Um, I just I think they're going to keep that writing ship going, and they are going to win this game. Putting at fifteen confidence, um, I just don't really trust Iowa State a whole lot on this one here. Clemson hasn't had any big significant wins, but um, right, they have been uh, they have been winning towards the back end of the season. I think they'll keep that up this time as well. Yeah, um, Penn State, Arkansas. I I agree with you. I think I think Arkansas is going to pull that one out. I'm actually going fourteenth confidence on that one. Um, to finish the season ranked in the top 25. Um, I just, I think they're a pretty solid team. I think Penn state, Penn state fell off. Um, Penn state really fell off and I just, I don't see them recovering to win a bowl game. You, you know, I mean, I just, I just don't see it coming. Um, with the Clemson Iowa state game, I'm actually really confident in this one. I'm going number six, and I'm going Clemson. I, I think Clemson, like you said, I think they righted the ship. Um, I don't think they're as bad as we thought they were at the beginning of the season. I think they lost a lot of talent to the NFL over the past couple of years. Um, I, I think, you know, there was probably talks throughout the year of some of their assistant coaches leaving, which now we know they are. Um, I just – I think some of that kind of got to the players and maybe even the coaching staff and it was kind of a rough start, but they did write the ship. You know, they, they came out fairly strong nine and three. I mean, it's not a Clemson season we're used to lately, but it's still a pretty solid season. So I'm going to take Clemson. I'm pretty confident in that one. Um, The next one, Virginia versus SMU. I'm going SMU here. I'm going number five confidence. I like SMU. I've, I think SMU has been building a pretty solid program the past several seasons. And I, I think they're just going to continue doing that. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident in this one. Um, their quarterback, Tanner Mordecai, he uh, 3,628 yards, which is 10th in the nation and 39 touchdowns. He had a really good year. And I think he's going to continue that good year. Um, I'm going SMU, number five. I'm confident. Next one, Kansas State, LSU. Man, what happened to LSU? <laughs> six and six. That's crazy. Ogeron's leaving. It, it, it looks like it's over. You, you know, it looks, it looks like it's done there in LSU for a while. Um, <laughs> saying that, I'm going to take LSU. <laughs> I'm going to put it at 31st confidence because I'm not very confident. But – I don't know why, but I'm taking LSU in this one. I, I, I don't, I don't really know why, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take them. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that one there. I, yeah. I, 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 all right. Um, 
I agree with you. I, I think Tanner Mordecai does lead SMU to victory. And this one here, the Fenway Bowl, is actually played at Fenway Stadium in Boston. And I think uh, he is going to hit himself a home run uh, in the park <laughs> and uh, and take him to the victory. And I'm putting that number 17 overall. That would be a big victory for SMU, too, over top uh a game ACC Virginia school. So uh, SMU, I, if, and I believe, I don't know if it's this coming year or a couple of years, but they're actually going to be joining into the big 12 as well very soon. So they, uh, they could use some big wins going into that uh, move with conferences uh, in the Kansas state LSU matchup. Um, well, you pretty much told the story of why I'm not choosing LSU. <laughs> uh, um, but for some reason, you did still chose them. So uh, yeah. I'm going to say I'm going to use that same story and say that is why I'm going to choose Kansas State. And as such, LSU is going to have their very first losing season since 1999. Has yeah. not happened in a long time. But things are on the horizon for them. They have Brian Kelly that's coming over to LSU. Uh, he won't be coaching this game, which is why I think they're going to lose, but um, they do have a new head coach on their way in. Um, and you never know. Um, the other big thing on that though, is that Brian Kelly has been like firing all of their assistant coaches in order to bring in new assistant coaches. So yeah. I think it's going to hurt, like hurt them in this game and getting in the preparations for that. So ultimately, I think Kansas State's going to win that game for all the reasons why you said they were going to. Um, <laughs> and then, hey, now uh, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. I just, I just chose them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, I am going to choose uh, Louisiana, who I mentioned earlier, over Marshall um, in the New Orleans Bowl. They are, they have already lost their coach because their coach is actually going to the University of Florida, but uh, they are a great team um they've won 12 straight games they won the Sun Belt title they lost the very first game of the season and then they have not lost since then right and I think they want to show that they can win despite losing their coach and I think they will win despite the coach um Marshall I mean I just got done watching we are Marshall a couple days ago and I almost <laughs> picked them just because like they got me all inspired but right. uh, then I remember this is not We Are Marshall. This is just Marshall. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, so I'm taking Louisiana. And I'm actually putting that one very high up there. Number five conference overall because I really believe in this Louisiana team. They're really good. And yeah. uh, I think they have, a, they have a bright future going forward. They're ranked number 16, which I think is kind of a, a lower ranking for them. I know it's because they're not very good conference, but uh, – I think after the bowl season's over, they're going to be ranked up there closer to 10 for the final rankings this season. So, uh, yeah, we're going with Louisiana in the New Orleans Bowl. Next up, the Liberty Bowl, Texas Tech versus Mississippi State. Breaks my heart to say this because I once wanted to go to Texas Tech, but I am going to take Mississippi State, and I'm putting this at number 20 overall. Um, this is actually Mike Leach coming back to town to take on Texas Tech. I think he's going to have some vengeance on his mind. The yeah. team is going to want to be inspired to play behind him. It's a good story. That's why I'm sure they made this game is because of the story of Mike Leach gets his old team. I think Mike Leach gets the upper hand and wins this game, and I'm putting a 20 in overall confidence. Finally, we got the Military Bowl. It's getting played at the Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. I guess that's their way of making up for the fact that the Naval Academy is not in the bowl game this year. Right. Um, <laughs> it's going to be ECU versus Boston College for the record. The Naval Academy pretty much won a bowl game because they just beat the Army. And right. that essentially is a bowl game. It's bigger than any bowl game that comes after it, in my opinion. So, But <laughs> um, ECU versus Boston College. This is ECU's first bowl appearance in seven years. First time these two teams have ever met together. Um, not a whole lot more to say about it than that. And the fact that Eastern Carolina is going to win the game. Um, I like the colors, purple and yellow. Why not? Yeah. Let's go, with that, let's go with that color scheme. <laughs> Great looking team. Great looking team. One of my favorites in college football. I love their jerseys. Absolutely. Um, going back to the Marshall Louisiana game, I I'm going Louisiana, and I'm very confident. I'm going number two overall. I I think Louisiana spreads the ball around really well. They don't have any standout guys like like stat wise. No one's stats stick out to you, but. They had three running backs over 500 yards and six receivers that had over 200 receiving yards on the season. No one is a favorite. 
No one is the standout guy. Just everyone does their job on that team and they do it well and they win games. Like you said, they lost the first game of the season, haven't lost since. The rank number 16, I don't see them losing this one. Very confident in that one. Um, the next game, Texas Tech, Mississippi State. I'm actually going to disagree with you. I think Texas Tech pulls this one out. I'm going to put it at 19th confidence. Um, I think Texas Tech and Mississippi State, I think it's going to be a really good game. But I don't know. I wasn't very impressed with Mississippi State this year. So I'm going to take Texas Tech in that one. We'll see what happens. See what happens. I'm. You've been wrong before. Wrong. We, we, we expect it. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Boston College, ECU. I'm going to go ECU in this one. Not overly confident, though. 26th overall. Um, they had a pretty good quarterback, junior quarterback, Holton Ehlers. Um, 3,100 yards, 20th in the nation, 18 touchdowns. They have a freshman running back, Keaton Mitchell. He had 174 carries, 1,132 yards. He averaged 6.5 yards per carry. That's, that's pretty good. And then nine touchdowns, so... Um, they also had a sophomore cornerback, Jaquan McMillan, who had 38 solo tackles and 18 assisted. So that's 56 tackles on the season. He had one forced fumble, two fumble recoveries, and he was tied for second in the nation with five interceptions. He also had 15 passes defended, which was second in the nation. So pretty solid cornerback. Um, maybe even maybe even an NFL prospect. Could we be seeing an NFL prospect in this game? Maybe. Might be a fun one to, to check out and see what this guy looks like, you know. Absolutely. No, I mean, I obviously said Eastern Carolina as well. I think they're a really good team. And uh, we had a, we got some similarities in that group there, other than that Mississippi State-Texas game. But um, right. uh, I find it interesting looking at your board before we move on. Like, uh, the fact that uh, all we have left is two New Year's Six games and the playoffs, and – you have nothing left available on the left side of your board. It's all yeah. on the low confidence meter, which uh, as you're going to see here in a second is very different than me. I yeah. put confidence in the games that I believe in and the teams that I've been watching all season long. Uh, and we're going to start that off with talking about the peach bowl. One of our new year's six games, the peach bowl is Michigan state versus Pittsburgh. Very interesting matchup between these two uh, because both of them had very strong seasons. Um, but obviously didn't quite make it high enough to get into a, a playoff game. They were like the last ones remaining from their conferences, which is why they got right. – so they, they got a good bowl game out of it. Uh, Pittsburgh won the ACC championship, which automatically qualified them for the Peach Bowl, and um, it, which was also the first time ever winning a standalone conference title. That's a big deal for them. Yes, and it is. Yeah, and it's also going to be their very first New Year's Six Bowl game in the college uh, football playoff era. Um, they do have a Heisman candidate in Kenny Pickett, so that's a big one for them. And they're going to be playing, but they're playing against a beast of a team in Michigan State. This team has running back Kenneth Walker, number two in the country in rushing yards, 1,636 rushing yards. And unlike the other running back I mentioned earlier who comes from kind of a junior level, so he did this against a big 10, like yes. what a beast. He's a finalist for the Maxwell award. Um, my opinion, he should have at least like, gotten some votes in the Heisman. He, and he might've gotten some votes in the Heisman uh, chase, but uh, he didn't quite make it to the final stage. So we'll see how that ends up. But, uh, and another just fun tidbit, the head coach for Pittsburgh, which is Pat uh, Narduzzi. He is a former defensive coordinator for Michigan state. So he's going back to play his old team. I don't think it's going to end well for him. Uh, unlike uh, Mike Leach, who's going back and he's going to probably beat Texas Tech, I think uh, uh, Narduzzi is going to go back and lose to Michigan State. And I am very confident in that because I really believe in this Michigan State team. I just, uh, the Big Ten as a whole this year, really good year. Um, they've been not having the best luck when they go against other non-conference teams over the last couple of years. So I think this is the year they're going to write that ship and they're going to have some really big uh, Big Ten wins. As you already see on my board with the um, – the Iowa matchup and the Michigan state matchup. I, and I think it's going to even farther trickle down from that. So I'm i uh, I'm going to be taking Michigan state in this game. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to disagree with you. As you know, I'm an ACC guy. Um, I'm going to go pit. Um, I think, I think Kenny Pickett had, I mean, he obviously had a great year, 
he was fifth in the nation in yards. He had over 4,300 yards. He was third in the nation, 42 touchdowns. Um, the, the stat that really stood out to me, though, was sophomore wide receiver Jordan Addison. This guy had 93 catches, 1,479 yards, which is third in the nation. And he also had 17 touchdowns catch. That, that, that's, that's, that's crazy. 17 receiving touchdowns. That's, that was first in the nation. He averaged 15.9 yards per catch. So he, he's kind of a big play ready to happen at any time. And this guy's a sophomore. You know, he's got, he's got at least, I don't know if he's a redshirt sophomore or just a sophomore, but he's got at least one more year maybe two. So we could see this guy develop into a, a, a legit NFL prospect, you know, here in the next year or two, depending on how long he plays. Um, Kenny Pickett is a senior. So he's, I, I believe he's done after this year, unless he somehow gets like a medical or something, but I mean, he played all season, so that's not happening. Well, I believe I think, he actually could get an exemption uh, because I believe even this year's seniors potentially could get another year of eligibility due to the COVID uh, policy. Okay. And I'm that's not why, stick, though. I'm not that's why I brought it. that up. I was going to question, you know, is that going to be a possibility for some of these guys? So I know no, last year's, all of last year's seniors were able to come back this year. And I believe last right. year's juniors, I, I believe it's like everyone who, everyone in college last year is given an extra year of eligibility. I believe is how that policy went down. So, okay. All right. And I figured they'd do something like that. Um, but for Kenny Pickett, I don't think it's worth coming back. I think oh, no, he he'll, showed... he'll definitely be a, I, I don't think he's going to be a top 10, but he'll definitely be someone that'll likely get drafted. In next right. Year. I think he showed enough this year that team, someone's going to jump on him, you, you know, um, probably towards the middle or late first round. I think he'll go. Um, Michigan State, though, man, they were good this year. Kenneth Walker, I mean, you already mentioned it, second in the nation in, in rushing yards, 18 touchdowns, 6.2 yards per carry. That's a lot, especially against the Big Ten. I mean, that's that's a really good season. Um, Jaden Reed had 53 catches, 946 yards. He was 17.8 per catch. That's another big play receiver, you, you know. Um I'm taking Pitt, though. I think Pitt's going to pull this one out. I'm really high on Kenny Pickett. I'm not confident in this game, though. I'm putting it 35th. I'm not very confident in any of these big games because I just – these are really good teams that are playing each other. These are really uh, just I, – I, I don't have, a, like, the confidence in these games because I'm not sure who's going to win. Moving on to the next game, we've got Ohio State versus Utah in the Rose Bowl. And this one, who 41 confidence. <laughs> I'm going Utah. I think Utah is coming off a really high note. They, they, they really beat up on Oregon in that Pac-12 title game. Um, Oregon was kind of talked about as one of these top teams this year. And, and Utah, Utah kind of handled them pretty easily. Um, I also feel that the whole, I don't know the entire story, but I know that Utah lost two players within a year of each other. And I feel like they're really riding that wave of emotion of they're playing for these teammates of theirs. They've been playing very well. Um, they looked very good. They, they looked awesome against Oregon. I mean, that, that, that was a really good game, even though it was a blowout. I mean, it just – Utah really, really played well. And I'm going with Utah on this one. I, I think Cameron Rising is a, is a pretty solid quarterback. Um, he's only a sophomore. Um, his QB rating was eighth in the nation. So pretty solid year. All year round, he played pretty consistent. Um, sophomore running back Tavian Thomas he had over over a thousand yards and 20 touchdowns which was actually tied for first in the nation so I I think Utah is going to pull this one out Ohio State is a very 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 young team though very young they have a freshman quarterback um, they had a freshman running back and a sophomore receiver who were their 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 top players all year so watch out for this team next year I think Ohio State's going to be very good next year. Um, they also have a sophomore safety, Ronnie Hickman. He had a great year. Um, he just, he, again, one of those guys that put stats all over the board, and he just, I mean, sophomore, freshman, freshman, sophomore. It's like, man, 
this team's going to be really solid next year, but I don't, I don't see it this year. Well, uh, I disagree. And, uh, once again, I think you, uh, you told the story for me. So, uh, right there, what you just <laughs> said, youth talent and absolutely insane talent to the point that they are fearless. And, and that's yeah. exactly why the Rose bowl will be won by another big 10 school. And that's going to be Ohio state. The Buckeyes. <laughs> uh, that is, uh, another big 10 school, in my top 10 of confidence. I have a lot of confidence in the big 10 this year. I, I think Ohio that. state is going to probably like, take utah to town pretty easily i just don't think, I, think utah, so. I don't think utah has a chance against ohio state ohio state is mad and vengeful uh for the fact that they got beat by michigan um they are gonna have uh cj stroud leading them up a heisman nominee very likely gonna be the winner of the heisman when that gets announced later on this week um and uh i think he is going to probably uh whip up on Utah pretty badly. Now, the only challenge they might have is that they very likely could be without both their wide receivers. Both um, Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson are likely going to opt out to go to the NFL. However, I still think uh, even though, yes, Utah won the Pac-12 title, they won it against an Oregon team that was struggling and falling apart at the end of the season. Um, so got to take it with some, not the grain of salt, but less than what it could be. Um, and with that said, I think Ohio State uh, takes it takes them down pretty handily and they move on to next year with the expectations. They're going to be back in the playoff again next year. And I think that's a great note to, uh, to lead us into making sure you join us next time for part three of this series. As we talk about the national championship picture, we're going to have Alabama versus Cincinnati, Michigan versus Georgia. Who's going to win that one. Who's going to win the national championship. We got to fill out the final bits of the board. So you're not going to want to miss next time when we come back zach thanks as always for joining us it was a fun uh it's been a fun it's been a fun uh, episode and a lot yeah. of good picks uh, i'm curious to see how it all turns out i think our our, our date our second episode here had a little bit more uh discontinuity between what our thinkings are but yeah. that's going to make it more fun to see how it all turns out but uh good luck with it um i think you're already on the losing path so that's uh that's good for me <laughs> I'm a chance taker. I like taking chances, man. And I, I'm, I don't know. We're going to, we're going to find out though. Oh, well, we will one way or another. Find out. <laughs> next, uh, next three weeks, one of us will win. Yep. <laughs>